Hey guys, I'm Jess Mandeville with The Goss USA, and today we are talking about myths that can make you fat. As if dieting wasn't hard enough, even if you have the willpower to stick to your diet, you may come across a few myths that stop it from being effective. So we at The Goss have come up with some myth busters to keep you on track. Myth number one, a big breakfast will keep you from eating too much later in the day. Not entirely true. It's a bad idea to skip breakfast because you're more likely to reach for extra morning snacks. But that doesn't mean a big breakfast is a good idea either. Stick to a morning meal that's slow burning and low in calories, like oatmeal, that makes you feel fuller for longer but won't see you piling on the pounds. Myth number two. Low fat or fat free foods contain significantly fewer calories. Just because a food is labeled as being low in fat doesn't necessarily mean it's low in calories because fat can be replaced by other nutrients that provide calories such as proteins and carbs and sugar. This is especially true if you end up eating larger portions of low fat foods. So check the label and count those calories. Myth number three. Skipping carbs is all you need to do to lose weight. Not true. The popularity of various low-carb, high-protein diets has lulled us into thinking that starch is bad. After all, the body processes starch and other carbs into sugar, which might then be converted into excess fat. But carbs on their own are not the ultimate problem. Eating in excess of anything that contains calories is fattening, even if you replace your carbs with proteins. And our final myth of the day, you can eat whatever you want as long as you exercise. Just because you've been slaving on the treadmill for two hours doesn't mean that you should overindulge. Your energy intake will have to be less than your energy expenditure in order to lose weight. It's a common misconception. And many people replace the energy that they burn off during exercise with a sugar-containing sports drink which isn't a good idea. Hey guys, I'm Jess Mandeville with The Goss USA and we're talking about speed dating. Does it work? Everyone has a list of qualities that they look for in a boyfriend and though physical attributes often feature, who you fall for usually comes down to chemistry. So can you discover your life partner in seven minutes on a speed date? Well, what makes speed dating different from meeting someone in your local bar is that all the participants have the same objective, to meet someone special. Love and marriage have generally gone hand in hand. And with the efficiency of shotgun weddings and quickie divorces, it's only natural for dating to follow suit. The rules are quite simple. A group of singles get together in a bar or a pub, and then armed with a name tag and a scorecard and your sparkling personality, you're paired up with a guy to begin your first date. You're allowed to discuss anything except where you live. And after seven minutes, a bell is rung, and then the guy moves on to the next date. Think of it as the flirt's version of musical chairs. Now after each date, you mark on a card whether you want to see him again. If it turns out he likes you too, then the organizers provide you with each other's phone numbers. So does it actually work? Well, speed dating is in fact fairly successful, with usually half of those attending coming away with a potential match. And while some of you may be uncomfortable with having to make the same small talk ten times in one night, advocates say that the success of this rather unconventional arrangement lies in the conventional. Simple chemistry. But the question still remains, is seven minutes enough time to assess someone? After all, in that short time, you may have written somebody off that you might have otherwise found interesting had you met them under other circumstances. Equally, you might think you've met your dream date, but had you more time, even one more minute, you'd have discovered his biggest passion, stamp collecting. It seems to us that the popularity of speed dating may have reached a saturation point, and we at the Goss have a feeling that this fad seven minutes may soon be up. Hey guys! 
guys, I'm Jess Mandeville with the Goss USA, and we're talking about how to get him to pop the question. It's a modern world, and you're a modern woman with your own job and your own life and your own flat, but some things never change. You want to get married, but he hasn't asked you yet. What's wrong with him anyway? You've been going out for a long time. It's obvious that you're in it for the long haul, but where's your ring? There comes a point where it may seem as if you've done everything in your power to set the stage for wedlock. You spend every weekend with him. You're nice to his mom. You even put up with him watching football in his underwear. You cook him nice dinners and you do his laundry. See, you'd be a great wife. So what can you do to get him to pop the question? Well, firstly, don't give him an ultimatum. I know, I know, it seems very unfair that you do all of these wonderful things for him and he still hasn't taken the hint. But it's never a wise idea to give a man an ultimatum. They don't respond well to them. Besides, you're a big girl and you choose to do all that stuff. So stop letting him take you for granted. Our grandmothers had a saying, why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? That doesn't just apply to sex. It also applies to the way you've made his life so comfortable that he doesn't see any reason to make a change. So, get a life of your own. Stop spending all your time with him. Go back to dating, which means getting together to do something other than laundry or dinners in front of the telly. Go out with your own friends, take a yoga class, whatever makes you happy, really, so long as it makes you a little bit harder to get. The results of this strategy will either be that he realizes what a good thing he has in you and pops the question, or you'll realize that there's more to life than getting a ring on your finger. Maybe you'll even meet someone else who's as ready for marriage as you are. The other alternative is to ask him yourself. There's no reason why you can't do the asking. Just don't do it in a peevish, I think it's time we got married tone of voice. It can be as casual or as romantic as you like. You can buy him a ring or you can bring him flowers. Just be prepared that he might say no. And if he does, it would hurt. But at least it would solve the mystery of why he hasn't popped the question all this time. And you can decide where to go from there. Hey guys, I'm Jess Mandeville with the Goss USA, and we're talking about inspirational women, specifically Madonna. Glamour magazine recently voted Madonna the most inspirational woman in the world. Well, the jury's still out on that one, but we can certainly learn a lot from the superstar. Madonna is the highest earning female recording artist of all time, having sold more than 200 million albums in her 29-year career amassing around a $500 million fortune. That's 316 million pounds to you Brits. And more than two decades since she began, the singer is still topping the charts. Her most recent album, MDNA, went to number one in the charts earlier this year, setting a new record for the most chart-topping albums by a solo artist. The album title, MDNA is an abbreviation of Madonna's name, but it drew criticism from anti-drug campaigners because of the similarity to the Class A drug MDMA. But then, Madonna has always courted controversy. Over the course of her career, the Vatican has condemned her, MTV has banned her, and the media has vilified her. But the criticism she's received for her work hasn't deterred her. Madonna's mother died of cancer when she was just five. She was later in an abusive marriage with Sean Penn, and she survived each setback and emerged victorious. When Madonna wanted people to be sexually liberated, she released erotica. When she wanted people to question their spirituality, she released Like a Prayer. Known for her outstanding live performances and her over-the-top costumes, Madonna has created the trends that others follow. The 1980s were characterized by teenage girls who wanted to look like her, right? Her trademark looks along the way have included fishnet stockings, lace gloves, conical bras, and wearing the cross. She still keeps incredibly fit, and though she's now in her 50s, you'd never know it. Madonna has an incredible work ethic and believes that in order to get things done, 
you need to get the groundwork done. Considering she came to New York in 1977 with just $35 in her pocket, what she's achieved in her lifetime is amazing. She's an inspiration to women everywhere, living proof that you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Hey guys, I'm Jess Mandeville and we at The Goss have got some movie news for you. Summer blockbuster season is almost upon us and we at The Goss have been taking a look at what to expect in cinemas in the coming weeks. First up, it's Prometheus, a brand new sci-fi set in the late 21st century from director Ridley Scott. Starring Guy Pearce, Idris Elba, and Charlize Theron, the story centers on the crew of the spaceship Prometheus as they follow a star map discovered among the remnants of several ancient Earth civilizations. The film's tagline is, They went looking for our beginning. What they found could be our end. Scott has hinted that the movie is a prequel to Alien, although the studio bosses have downplayed this link. The Amazing Spider-Man sees a return of the Spider-Man movie franchise after Spider-Man 4 was cancelled in 2010 as a result of the flop of Spider-Man 3. It follows Peter Parker, Andrew Garfield, as he develops his superpowers in high school after being bitten by a radioactive spider. A familiar story, but told in a very different way, so don't expect to see a remake of Spider-Man 1. Finally, The Bourne Legacy will see the fourth and possibly final movie in the Bourne series hit our screens, and this time, oddly, without Jason Bourne. Jeremy Renner headlines this Bourne-less and Matt Damon-less version, with Rachel Weisz as his love interest and Edward Norton as the villain. <laughs> 